G'day world, Chris Hogan and Andrew Grote coming to you live from Mi Media Studio here at Burley Heads for episode 85 of Get Fact Up and today we are talking about... Uh, brand awareness and why you shouldn't discount that as a marketing tactic. <laughs> yeah, marketing tactic, that's right. So recently we've noticed, and I'm sure you have too, uh, there's been a huge shift away from traditional media to digital media. Mm-hmm. And obviously the traditional media play is all about brand awareness because mm-hmm. getting actionable ROI, you know, from traditional is pretty hard. You know, there's mm-hmm. nowhere to click. <laughs> you can't track you yeah. can't track what's happening there. You're basically just asking everyone, where do you hear of us? Yeah. Effectively. Yeah. And even then they can say whatever they want. <laughs> That's right. So on tradi- on on digital media where we're all about oh you know we've got to track every metric track every audience mm. um you know distill it down to this perfect little you know into this petri dish this perfect culture and we know uh, exactly what's going on with our marketing and that's really great except many of us have discounted the power of brand awareness well that's right i think the problem is now that we have everything so um measurable is that's what people want. They want um, to be able to track from here to here to see that ROI in the journey and all that. And while that's good, it it doesn't necessarily help you every time. And also, you still need brand awareness. You still need to be focusing on brand awareness. Um, the problem is now that it's it's sort of synonymous with traditional media. When you say to someone you need to work on your brand awareness, they're like, nah, mm. give me something that has ROI in it that I can get excited about. Exactly. So what's happened is that by discounting brand awareness, we've basically said that you know um, we you know we, we discounted traditional media. Yep, they go hand in hand. Now, why would you advertise on traditional media, being TV and radio, if your audience aren't there? Same goes. Why would you advertise on digital? You know social media platforms mm-hmm. if your audience aren't there so all we're basically saying is if you're going to do brand awareness do it where your audience are do it where people are spending time and lots of it <laughs> and that mm-hmm. is on social media and whether it be youtube you know people are spending heaps of time on on youtube uh you can do brand awareness there and if you're in a competitive landscape and everybody's, you know, if you, if you sort of said that everybody had uh, the same level of skills and, and capabilities, you know, mm. in that competitive landscape and you need to stick your head above all of them, then essentially brand awareness is, is the best way to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's good to have some sort of blanket approach to just dominate that space and dominate uh, people's thoughts, basically. Um, but I think the, the thing that a lot of people um, assume is that there's no way you can actually track um, a brand awareness campaign in digital. And that, that's not exactly true. Mm. We were talking about this today and I said that there's a metaphor that kind of um, goes with this is you can't, um, you can't see the wind, but you can see its effects. And the same goes with brand awareness. So you can do things like look at your direct traffic on your website you can uh, look at the volume of traffic that's coming in. If the, your volume of traffic's increasing, that's also a really good way to see, um, you know, your, your brand awareness growing. If you're um, tracking things like keyword keywords and, and your SERPs and stuff like that, you can certainly see if more people are searching your name and that sort of thing. And then if we switch over to social, um, well, that's obvious by the reach that you're getting, by the amount of page followers that you're getting without you having to do anything. Um, you can look at your at mentions that you're getting, like the amount of people uh, mentioning you without you um, asking for it. And there's... Um, the amount of time people are spending watching your videos, so minutes viewed. Yeah, and then there's, there's also things like um, there's lesser known metrics in Facebook, like um, people talking about this, I think, is one, mm. which is um, a sort of a measurement of basically your word getting around and things like that and and that that ties into a lot of ads and posts and things that that you do as well so you can see the viral reach of things that you're putting out there absolutely so content marketing actually fits really well into brand awareness and Mm -hmm. that is creating content is about you know it's pool marketing 
It's about catching people at, at times when they're not really sure they, they were actually interested in your business, but mm-hmm. they're interested in the topic that you're talking about. Mm. And so that that's content marketing, but that it's also brand awareness. They may not actually t- buy in right now, as in they may not purchase the product right now. They might not even read the article right now, but if they see what you're about, Hmm. then they can start to make some associations. If they see who you're hanging out with, for example, uh, what are you sponsoring? If you're, if you are sponsoring sports, uh, if you're sponsoring, you know, TV shows or anything like that, why, why are you doing that? Yeah. What's that association? And, um, that's also uh, another interesting point there because like a lot of traditional media um, is about sponsorship and things like that as, um, as getting your brand out there. But the, the good thing about doing that in a digital space as well is there's a lot of distrust and people like to see, um, see your alignments and things like that. And it's, it's uh, what do they call it? It's um, uh, when it's by association. It's like association um, marketing or something like that. Sorry, I think. dude. <laughs> My brain's just as dead as yours. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that part out. Go, maybe. Go. <laughs> <laughs> or not. I mean, yeah. if you're doing the editing this time, it's you a, choose. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Look, yeah, we don't have all, all the words in the vocabulary right when we want them, but uh, that's what we're all about, being authentic. And, and uh, here we are doing Get Fact Up. But... I am very confident that anybody out there with a marketing budget who basically wants to play this brand awareness play, you know, that really you're in a competitive landscape, you just need your head to stick above everybody else's, then uh, just put your money where the people are. Put it where they hang out. And that is on certain social medias, depending on your audience. I would definitely say that TV uh, viewing has gone down. It's a second screen or a third in Mm. the room. And the amount of people that turn off to advertising on TV is ridiculous. We have facts around that. We are get fact up. And you know what? We'll just may have to deliver those in a different (laughs) different episode. That's all. This is a bit of a rant, I guess. At the same time, it is educational. You know, I'm very passionate about what it is we do here. And, and a lot of people will say, well, um, you know, well, you, you, this particular campaign looks very brand awareness-like. Yeah, it is. But It's I, also content marketing and it's also SEO and it's also, you know, paid advertising. Uh, it's got a lot of metrics that can be measured. And, you know, I wouldn't say there's anything... Um wrong with saying something's brand awareness. When you start yeah. any type of marketing, that's where you have to start anyway. You have to uh, just start with seeing how receptive people are to your brand as a whole rather than uh, trying to get across a specific message because you don't necessarily know what people are going to respond to just yet. And the best thing about brand awareness or reach or impression-based marketing, if you're choosing that as your, your goal or your result or your conversion in say AdWords or Facebook, mm. it's the cheapest thing you can do. Mm. If you're um, only paying per thousand impressions, it's the cheapest thing you can do on Facebook. And same with same with AdWords and LinkedIn. If you're paying for <laughs> reach, it's, it costs nothing. You mm. can reach a, a million people for next to nothing, but mm. um, it costs a lot more if you're trying to drive a specific conversion, because you know obviously Facebook and AdWords know that that is making yeah. you money, so they yeah. want a piece of it. Yeah. So brand awareness plays in, in social media land because we've all got access to the advertising you know, managers uh, on those platforms now, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, you name it, YouTube. And, and so you can define your audiences and you can define their affinities and, and, and all of that sort of stuff. So it is more powerful than traditional. Mm. Uh, but it's just the type of ad that Andrew's basically saying that you can that you can use. You know, you have far more targeting capability, but it's the type of ad that you choose which may be different based on your budget and what your what your goal is, what your what your desired outcome is. Mm-hmm. And yeah, brand awareness can be very powerful. Hmm. I think that's all we got time for. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.